Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Quiles, and in this first episode of Q Reviews, we're gonna be checking out this product, the HP ZBook X2. The HP ZBook X2 features Windows 10 Professional 64-bit. It has a seventh generation Intel Core i7 processor. You have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte PCI Express SSD storage drive. The display features what HP calls their dream color technology. It's a 14 inch 4K IPS anti-glare touchscreen. It features an NVIDIA Quadro M620 graphics card with two gigabytes of GDDR5 dedicated RAM. On the front of the tablet, you have a 720p HD webcam and on the back side, an eight megapixel camera. The HP ZBook X2 weighs in at 4.78 pounds with the keyboard attached. The tablet alone weighs 3.64 pounds. And lastly, it features audio from Bang & Olufsen. Now with all of the tech specs out of the way, let's go ahead and let's do a walk around of this uh, HP ZBook X2. And so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and detach the screen. And what you're gonna see, you have a Bluetooth keyboard that comes with the ZBook X2. It's pretty nice. There's actually on the back side of the keyboard, you actually have a USB connection here so you can connect additional devices to this. The trackpad on this is pretty smooth. It's uh, fairly responsive, which I do like. Um, on top of the keyboard, you have these little rubber pieces here that basically keep this monitor screen from, or rather the keyboard from touching the screen, which is pretty nice. And so moving this out of the way, we've got the actual ZBook X2 screen, which basically has everything built into it. So your graphics card, your CPU, everything is all built into this one device, which comes in handy because as somebody who uses the Microsoft Surface Book, when you wanna detach the keyboard from the actual screen, because the GPU is built into the keyboard, oftentimes it tells you, stop, you have to turn off all these different programs before you could actually disengage the keyboard. What's nice about this is that everything is built into the screen. So when I wanna take the keypad off, and I'll go ahead and demo that here, connects magnetically, very quick and easy. And when I wanna detach it, I don't have to actually go ahead and disable all these programs. We just pick it up and take it off, which is kinda of cool. So first things first, there is a hinge on the back of this. Now it says it's a 160 degree hinge on the back. So you can actually place this in a bunch of different positions here. So I could have it sit straight up if I'm watching a movie or watching YouTube videos, whatever the case might be. I could have this sitting on a table, very easy to watch. You could actually lift this up and at the full position here, you could have it laying not flat, but pretty close to flat. Obviously I could go ahead and close the hinge and make it completely flat, but instead you have it at a nice angle, which from what I found, it works really well when you're retouching photos, because you, you could just have this thing sitting on a table, have your pen, go ahead and start drawing, writing, whatever the case might be. This position is really nice and you could lean your weight on top of the tablet and it seems to hold up pretty well, which is pretty exceptional. Now on the left and right side of the screen, you've got these keys here, which HP is calling them their quick keys. And so there are six keys on the left, six keys on the right, and built in, they give you three different menu structures, I guess you could say. So there's 18 different functions that these buttons will accomplish for you. And so you could do a number of different things. You could go ahead and use it to for example, in Photoshop, you could adjust the size of your brush. You can use it to have your shortcuts for your Control, Alt, and Shift keys, which really, again, comes in handy when you're retouching. Um, you can use this to zoom in and out of your screen. You could touch the, turn the touch off and on. There's a lot of different functionality that you get with these buttons here. This is probably one of the one things that I think separates this device from the Surface Book. When I was retouching with the Surface Book, you do get a pen, does come in handy. However, what I didn't realize was when you're doing skin retouching, oftentimes you have to hit Alt to sample a piece of skin and then brush over the part that you're trying to get rid of. What happened is 
Basically, Adobe ended up putting a soft key into Photoshop. So you have your Alt, your Control, and your Shift keys, but since there's no physical keys on the actual bezel of the screen, they created a soft key within Photoshop. So you'd have to hit this digital button to go ahead and hold down Alt to select if you're doing clone stamp tool or whatever, and it sucks. You'd tap Alt, you'd click the screen, nothing would happen, it was super, super annoying. What's really nice on this HP ZBook is you actually have a physical button. So what I ended up doing to alleviate that problem back in the day, I actually had to use an external gaming um, keypad. And so I would use that and I would customize that so that I could hit Alt on that and go ahead and write. What's nice is this is all built into one device. Go ahead and hit Alt, tap, go ahead and brush in, it's super easy. Or since the keypad works with Bluetooth, I could have the keyboard set to the side and I could just use the keyboard to go ahead and do my retouching as well. So it's kind of cool. You have a lot of functionality, a lot of flexibility to be able to use this device, however it is that you want to use it. So anyway, let's talk about the inputs, which we kind of showed here on the side, but you have your power connection and it does have an LED light to let you know that you've plugged in your power. You've got two USB-C ports, which is going to be great if you're trying to connect additional devices, whatever the case might be. You've got an HDMI, you've got a USB 3.0. Most importantly for, this is really being targeted towards photographers, videographers, and just like the MacBooks, they're being targeted to that same creative space. The big difference is that you end up having to use a dongle to be able to plug in your SD cards. This one actually has an SD card reader built into the side. And so I have my um, newer Sony uh, UHS-2 SD cards, which I can go ahead and plug into the side. Now, this particular model, I'm not 100% sure because I didn't see it in the specs, but up top there is a fingerprint reader. I don't know if this model has it because I couldn't find it in the, the specs for this, but this is where it would be. Now, on the opposite side, we've got our volume up and down buttons, we have our power button, and then we have one port which basically works for your headphones and your microphone. So that one port basically does double duty. And then on the bottom you have your lock. I don't use it, but I guess you can lock these things down. There is a port for that. Now on the very top of the screen, you've got two little slots here. Go ahead and lay that this way. So we've got two slots here. This is where your Bang & Olufsen speakers are located. Um, from what I've seen, and I'll talk about this here in a little bit, but the uh, placement of the speakers, I like the fact that it's on top of the screen because oftentimes they put the speakers on the back side of the monitor and it throws the audio in the wrong direction. Theoretically, I thought it would work better that the audio was pointing straight up. Not entirely sure if that is the case and we'll get back to that later, but the speakers are up top. On the bottom of the device, you basically just have your connections for the keypad. So there's not really anything that you're gonna be connecting to the bottom of this, but um, you do basically have the magnetic uh, device to reconnect your keyboard. On the front side, the front side of the screen here, we've got the webcam that's built in, and there's two IR sensors. So this does work with Microsoft Hello and you are able to go ahead and log in by it seeing your face, which is a really useful feature. On the back side, you've got your webcam on the back of the uh, ZBook X2, which is pretty nice. And uh, of course, the fancy Z logo on the back. So that's your brief product tour. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run some tests. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I ran some performance tests here with uh, Geekbench and with Cinebench, and let's go ahead and let's take a look at the results. So we got a lot of variations between the two programs in terms of the uh, OpenGL score and the CPU scores. 
It's not really conclusive for those of you who are interested in those types of numbers, there it is. Uh, to me, what I'm most interested in is what it actually does in terms of performance. And from what I could tell, they all operate pretty good as far as opening up Photoshop, opening up Premiere, working within those programs, they all work relatively quickly. Um, but I know a lot of the you know, geeks out there want to know the numbers of how all this works. And so those are the numbers. So now that we've gone ahead and done these tests, let's go ahead and do a rendering speed test. We're gonna take some 4K video, load it up into Premiere, and we're gonna go ahead and export that out. We're using Premiere to be able to do this test. And I know when I did a video a while back on a PC, people were saying, well, Final Cut is so much faster. You should have timed it Final Cut versus Premiere. And I think it's kind of a known thing that Final Cut is faster for rendering videos. However, you can use Premiere on the PC on all three of these different machines. That's the first thing. Second thing is I am kind of locked into the Adobe ecosystem. For those of you who are Apple users out there, you guys understand this lockdown into an ecosystem once you've started to buy different products. That's where I'm at right now. I use Photoshop, I use After Effects. Premiere just works seamlessly. When you have to take a file or whatever it might be from one program to the other, it's much easier to do that. And so I'm pretty locked down with using Premiere. So I kind of expect for these machines to perform a little bit better, but regardless, let's go ahead and let's test it out. Let's see what it actually does. Let's wrap up this video with uh, my final thoughts on this HP ZBook. Now, I probably should have said this at the beginning of this video, but I bought this with my own money. This is not sponsored by HP. They didn't send me this laptop. I actually have been watching this ever since it was announced at Adobe Max because I was looking for a new laptop to kind of use going into 2018. So bought this with my own money. The very first day it was available, shipping from HP. I ordered it, I got it, everything was great. But let's talk about the pros. I love the fact that it's got the Wacom screen and the Wacom technology built in. That really helps for retouching to be able to use the pen. I would say head and shoulders, it is the best experience that I've had using a uh, touch screen with this type of technology. So big, big plus for that. The fact that it has all of the different picture profiles with this dream color technology, um, you have Rec 709 color space, Adobe, sRGB, and that you can quickly change that on the fly to know that your colors are accurate. That's super just amazing. Uh, usually if you're using a desktop, you'd have to spend a lot of money to get a monitor that is color calibrated, that works with these different color spaces. And it's awesome that you get a portable screen that does that. Um, just overall, the overall use and functionality of the laptop is really excellent. The things that I don't like, obviously as we go through these tests and seeing that some of the things don't perform as well as a Mac, kind of is a little bit disturbing. Um, they chose to put a Intel Core i7 processor into this machine, but it's only a dual core processor and a lot of the newer machines are using quad core processors and they perform significantly better. I got the highest end model that you can get out of the box and unfortunately dual core is all you can get, uh, dual core four threads. So performance wise it's a little bit limiting. Um, even though it's got the Nvidia Quadro graphics card, which is a big plus, um, you know, that kind of sucks. They need to have a little bit of a faster processor in this. The other thing is that this Bang & Olufsen audio that's built in, typically this company makes really awesome quality audio products. HP has Bang & Olufsen speakers in this and they sound horrible. I actually get much, much better audio out of my Samsung Note 8 cell phone that I'm getting out of this, you know, $3,000 plus dollar laptop that's a bit disappointing. The last thing is that this laptop has what a lot of other laptops have, unfortunately, these days. It's got some light bleed happening where in the corners, the top left and right corners of the screen, you could see the LEDs kind of bleeding through the screen. And so for being a machine that's kind of geared towards photographers and videographers that are really interested in making sure that their colors are accurate, luminosity is also important. And when the luminosity is off in the corners because the screen isn't pure black, that could be a problem for some people. Now I would say for myself with retouching photos, 
I'm working on the center portion of the screen. Everything looks great from there. So it doesn't really affect my workflow that much, but it is a little bit annoying that in 2018, they're shipping out laptops that have these uh, quality issues with the screen. Uh, for most people, you may not notice it. I've actually ordered a brand new model of this laptop because I'm hoping that this is gonna be my laptop going into 2018. Hopefully the new one comes in and has less light bleed and you know, we, it's all ado about nothing. But with that being said, I would say that for photographers, this is probably one of the best machines on the PC side that really is available for people who are shooting photos or shooting video and wanna have a workstation that they can take with them on the go. Um, it, it performs great. If you're not uh, using it alongside of another machine, then perhaps you, know, you wouldn't notice any of the differences as far as the, uh, the slower processor but overall it's just a joy to use. And more than likely if I end up getting the second one and it doesn't have light bleed, I will end up keeping that laptop. So anyway, with that being said, I hope that you found this review useful. If you did, make sure you click that thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the machine, I may end up doing a follow-up video once the second one comes in. So leave any questions that you have in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys watching this first episode of Q Reviews, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.